Hey everybody, welcome back. It's your average jeweler again. I am so glad you're here. And today I'm partly talking about something that relates to me personally, but I also want to relate it to anybody out there that might be curious or thinking about getting into the world of jewelry. For me, it was not an expected thing. And even though uh, I don't get to do certain things as much as I might like to these days, I've had some great exposure in the jewelry world. I learned a lot of things and I feel like my story and the paths that a lot of people take to get into jewelry might be helpful and interesting to you. So I want to share that with you today. My journey in jewelry actually started by a friend um, who ended up being my boss, had seen me in some other workplaces and he had observed me for a time. He was going through some changes with his, his jewelry store and approached me about just potentially working with jewelry. I had not thought about it. I was intrigued. I don't think that this is the way that a lot of people get into jewelry but I decided to, to do it. I decided to jump in um, with the understanding that I would be getting some help through the process and that I would be able to ask a lot of questions. And right out of the gate, that was my experience, is I was able to just start learning things, start asking questions, being shown these different components. Um, something that is as simple, but also not as common today, is just going over the process of using an old engraving machine. And you don't even have those in a lot of jewelry settings today. Either something is, in, is hand engraved or a lot of places do laser engraving. So just having that exposure right out of the gate of something that's interesting and unique and not part of any other industry I had been a part of, it was really exciting and it definitely kick-started more interests for me down that road. Now, once I had been in jewelry for a time and had started to learn this specific store and their operations and, and those kind of tasks, I was able to start building on my knowledge in more formal ways. And for me, that looked like some GIA courses where I was able to participate in, in GIA's uh, initial um, jewelers accreditation course that they have. And that walks you through several different things, even to the point of what it looks like for security in a jewelry store. But they talk about some of the basics of diamonds and all the different gemstones, and you really get some great exposure from a formal setting. For me, it was far more valuable to be able to take what I was learning there, compare it with what I was seeing, compare with what I was hearing from vendors and from customers coming in. And then of course, to speak to my boss who was the jeweler and he was very educated and be able to just bring all of this knowledge into place. And that was my experience of getting into the more formal education. From there, I was able to take some of the more full classes from GIA and you know start digging that much deeper into some specific things. Now, without spending a ton of time just talking about what I did learning jewelry over the years, I think it's important to recognize that most people who do work in jewelry acquire this knowledge over a good period of time. There are a lot of things that, as I mentioned, you can learn in a book, but it's really hard to understand or maybe know what you're looking, like, looking at or how to identify certain things when you see them without going through it in person or maybe having someone walk you through it and then being able to identify it yourself over time. A very simple example of this, and I think I've mentioned it before, was when I first started, I remember my boss saying something about how easy it was to identify what, what was cubic zirconia. And I remember thinking, I don't know, it's fairly convincing. Like you can start looking at it and maybe you can start seeing some of the reflections look a little different. Um, cubic zirconia oftentimes will have more rainbow effect than something like a diamond does. But when he started saying, well, you look at the facets um, where the stone meets when it's cut and you look at those facets and a diamond is much sharper and much more clean, um, where cubic zirconia almost looks like the corners of glass when they polish them. And I remember thinking, I don't know, I, I don't feel like that's a really reliable way for me to do it. 
But after a few weeks and certainly after a few months of using a loop to look at these stones much more closely and after seeing some different examples, seeing how they look worn versus how they are new, I was able to start developing the, the process for what I needed to look for and what I was actually seeing. Because having someone explain it to you and even sometimes seeing a picture of a video can be hard versus actually going through that process of learning yourself. That for me was a really good example. And if you look at those that have been in the jewelry industry a long time, it does seem like time is a much bigger deal in something like that because there's so many situations, there's so many stones, there's all kinds of treatments that things go through. And to just acquire that knowledge and experience over time of what you're looking at and how to identify it quickly versus when you need more time and being able to express those things and teach those things, uh, it is a very time intensive effort to learn jewelry on a close and high level. And I believe that most people that are high in the jewelry industry are happy to teach those around them and they like to see people coming in that are excited, but they'll also tell you there are some things that just take time and you really need to be patient and spend a lot of time working with it. And I have never gotten into the lapidary practice where they cut gemstones too deeply. I had a little bit of exposure to it. I am very much not that person. But those that cut stones at a high level, they're started off with some very inexpensive stones. Then they start to understand the basic levels and they start to perfect that. But they spend many, many years honing that skill to a point where they feel like they're getting every little bit out of that stone that they can. And the finest gem cutters out there oftentimes will veer away from some of the formulas in order to get the stone to look that much more attractive. So you're veering away from the science, you're veering away from some of the book knowledge just based off of what you've been able to learn or maybe being able to apply it in a more specific way. So bringing it all back to what if you are thinking about getting into jewelry? What are some ways that you can break into it? Well, for starters, I hope that the videos I've made here on YouTube have been helpful. I think there are others out there that have also shown some really good expertise and have shown themselves to be good teachers. I will say one name because I think he's still making videos and I, I have seen several of them and find them to be very helpful is uh, Gemology for Schmucks. Um, he's much more the, the gemology source. Um, I do feel like I spend more time on some of the, the more practical interactions from uh, from like a customer standpoint. But for someone who's seriously thinking about pursuing jewelry, the information he has would be fantastic. So that would be the resource, you know, start somewhere where it's free and accessible like here on YouTube and just start getting as much knowledge as you can. Try and find sources that have jewelry background and you're going to find that you'll run into different opinions. Um, sometimes it's as basic as uh, gemstone lovers don't like diamonds or diamond lovers don't like gemstones. You, do, you usually don't get uh, a really hard line there but it's interesting when you start talking and listening to these individuals how they've developed opinions over the years and where they get those opinions from. Another thing that I mentioned are formal classes through organizations like GIA. GIA being the Gemological Institute of America. They provide some great resources. Some of them you can initially get on there and just read some articles and gather information. Typically that's going to be free. But GIA does have formal courses with formal materials that are very good where you can actually sign up and it is a paid course where you can get some jeweler credentials. Ultimately, you can get something like a graduate gemologist and that would provide you a very solid foundation getting into almost any type of, of jewelry realm. I've seen both ways. I've seen some people pursue the, the book knowledge and the certifications and the degrees first and then go into jewelry. And I've seen those where they get into jewelry and then they do their formal training. Now, neither of these is wrong. And you may find that some had success with one and another person didn't have success with the, the same scenario. It's, it's very rarely a one size fits all. However, 
If you have the option to get into a jewelry store, even at a very basic level, even if it's uh, starting out cleaning up in a jewelry store and being able to ask some questions and getting exposure, um, of course, more commonly, you'd be getting in as some type of a sales position and, and have exposure that way. And then maybe you branch into bench jewelry of some sort and you start being able to work on pieces. Uh, if you can get some general exposure and then start adding to the book knowledge, I found that to be very helpful for me. I think those that start off the book route find it difficult not having a lot of hands-on experience. So if they are in a jewelry store while they're doing that or throughout their education, I would say many of them find that most helpful. So that would be my encouragement, is to get yourself into some type of setting where you can be around uh, jewelry, be around gemstones, be around diamonds, be somewhere where you can look at them up close and be able to handle them and start to get opinions of others and, and build off the knowledge of their experience. I think that that's a great way to start. Now there are a lot of other ways to get into it. Some people go down the, the wholesaler route where maybe they wanna deal with with gemstones and they want to deal with raw gemstones. I can tell you that um, that is a lot of work and you'll want to probably get in with someone who has experience right out of the gate. You'll make your mistakes one way or another, but if you can work together with someone that's already knowledgeable on that, you're going to be much better off in the long run because it's very hard to learn some of the, the things and the practices and you'll be dealing internationally most likely. Um, at least if you're looking to be highly profitable, you're going to have to get closer to the sources and you're going to have to know how to source them and know what you're looking for. And it can be a lot of fun. And I know a lot of uh, wholesale vendors, specifically gemstone dealers, that love what they do and love being able to be around gemstones. But it takes a lot of experience and knowledge to do it well, and you can get yourself into trouble e either way. Uh, you might find that just breaking into some inexpensive stones and, and maybe more rough stones and just kind of building off of that works for you. There are a lot of ways to do it. I probably said that too many times in this video, but I hope that my perspective and what I've been able to see and watch maybe brings a little bit of insight to you. And again, please share with me, you know, what your thoughts are if you're trying to get into jewelry, um, what it looks like for you. Are you, you know, trying to do some bench work before getting into a jewelry store? Are you in a jewelry store and want to branch into something else? Have you started trying to buy stones and, and sell them yourself? You know, what interests you and what has, has worked out well? I'd really like to hear from everyone out there. Thank you so much if you're, you're still watching this video for being here. I hope that you keep coming back so that we can keep learning together.